Uh, I had no idea so many uh, Adelaideans had uh, time on their hands in the middle of the day to talk about this issue. And uh, I'm, as, as an out-of-towner, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. So uh, thank you for putting the time into what is a really important debate. Um, let me just start with the big picture context. Uh, uh, Australia is one of the richest countries in the world and we're living at the richest point in world history. From a material point of view, it doesn't actually get much better than, uh, than living in Australia right now. Now, uh, this doesn't mean there isn't poverty and disadvantage in Australia, or indeed uh, in any country there is, but uh, to, 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 to look at it in its big picture sense, uh, from an economic point of view, things don't get much better than they are in Australia or indeed in Adelaide. And the prosperity that we've built in Australia was not built on the back of nuclear waste dumps. We have actually made it this far without one. So to suggest that our future is inextricably tied up with one would, would seem a little bit odd. So I just want to kind of start from the point that even even if you took the, the forecasted benefits uh, of this project, forecasts made by its boosters, by its proponents, we're talking about a small project. We're talking about a small project that will create a small number of jobs. Compared to the car industry, for example, that state and federal governments were, were happy to see leave, and when I say happy, I mean didn't want to spend billions of dollars, taxpayers' dollars, to keep it, Compared to the car industry, this is small. Indeed, compared to the, what's the other way to put this? Um, compared to a powerhouse like news agents or pharmacies, all right, they employ a lot of people in South Australia. But this nuclear waste dump will not. Right? We're, we're talking hundreds of jobs in, 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 a, in a large state. So the problem, unfortunately, is I think the way the question has been framed and presented. Do South Australians want to invest a lot of money in a big project that will give South Australia a future, or do you want to sit on your hands and do nothing and just get poorer and poorer and watch unemployment grow? This is a poor way to frame such an important choice. As an economist, the first thing we teach uh, economic students is the idea of opportunity cost. That whenever you do something, you give up the opportunity to do something else. Billions of dollars spent subsidising uh, a nuclear waste dump are billions of dollars that won't be invested in transport, they won't be invested in education, they won't be invested in renewable energy. Hard choices need to be made in a democracy like yours. But the choice is not, should you subsidise a nuclear waste dump or should you do nothing? The question is, if you want to invest in South Australia's future, which projects are available? Which ones have the, uh, the highest likely returns? Which ones have the lowest future risk? From a menu, which would you pick? But you're not being offered a menu in the South Australian debate. You're being offered a waste dump or economic <coughs> decline. Now that sounds to me like someone's trying to railroad you. Now, the thing that no one disagrees with is that if you go ahead with this waste dump, the costs to you as taxpayers and citizens, the costs will be up front. The costs will be up front. The minute the first tonne of nuclear waste comes to your state, the risks will be up front. And the benefits are in the future and they're uncertain. What you're hearing about with people throwing billions and hundreds of billions of dollars around is the potential benefits. But what would happen if tens of thousands of tonnes of waste came to South Australia and the economics of the scheme didn't stack up halfway through? Who would bear the risk for that? You would. You as citizens and you as taxpayers. So we've looked carefully at the numbers that were put to the Royal Commission and uh, the Australian Institute does a lot of work looking at economic modelling, often critically, because unfortunately economic modelling takes a whole bunch of complicated assumptions and then turns them into a nice simple to understand headline. 
And there's an old adage with all forms of economic modelling, garbage in, garbage out. Okay, if the assumptions are flawed, then the conclusion is flawed. Or even if they're not flawed, if there's big uncertainty about the assumptions, then there'll be big uncertainty about the conclusion. So I'm happy to take lots of questions, but I'll just go through some of the key assumptions that we think are problematic. One of the most important assumptions is what price will other countries be willing to pay South Australia to store high-level nuclear waste? The reason that the economists working for the Royal Commission have to guess this is there's no price at the moment. There is no world market in nuclear waste. It doesn't exist. So I can tell you what the world price of oil is and the world price of coal is. I can't tell you what the price of oil and coal will be in 20 years' time. Okay? And, and actually, whenever we guess what the price of coal or oil is going to be in 20 years' time, we get it wrong. But we can't even tell you what today's price of nuclear waste is because there is no market for it. But the consultants working on this project have forecast a non-existent price out for the next century. Could be risky. Now the price they've put in, $1.7 million per tonne, is actually higher than it currently costs to store waste in countries that do store their own waste. So the economists, the assumptions in this model is that new nuclear reactors built in new countries, i.e. they haven't even been built yet, but countries that build new reactors will be willing to pay South Australia a higher price than, than, than people in the US, for example, already pay. So, so if the price forecast is wrong, the benefits will be overstated. This is not complicated. And there's no sensitivity analysis in the report. There's no, if we can't get 1.7 million, here's what it would be. Everyone's focused on that big headline, multi-billion dollar number. Um, quantity. Will all these nuclear power stations really be built? And will they really want to pay South Australia to store your waste? Maybe. Maybe not. Has anyone heard of, um, what's it called? Renewable energy? <laughs> <laughs> Some people reckon there's a future in it. Right, no, we don't. no, no, exactly. You can laugh at that because we don't know. But most economists think that the price of renewable energy is falling. Nuclear power has been around for 60 years. It's not a new technology. It just would be new to have a waste dump here in South Australia. So uh, the, the modelling assumes that lots of countries aren't going to go with cheap renewables. They're going to go with expensive nuclear. And because they've gone with expensive nuclear, they're going to want to pay a lot of money to store it here. Maybe. Or well, maybe they'll build windmills. And again, if that assumption about all those new countries building new reactors is wrong, then the conclusion about the value of the project is wrong. The other thing is that the modelling is based on the idea that in order to make this project viable, the waste will actually be stored above ground for nearly a century before it's all buried. Okay. Now, if the idea is it's good to bury it underground because that's where it's safe, keep in mind this project is designed and indeed only barely stacks up if they're allowed to store nuclear waste above ground for nearly a century. Effectively, that means they get paid to store it safely underground for a long time before they have to store it safely underground. Imagine if I said, look, I'm building a new house, I haven't built it yet, but would you start paying me rent? Because I would be a really profitable property developer if I could pull that off. Most people don't actually start paying the rent until the house is built. Yet South Australia is saying well, people will pay us up front for safely storing their waste even though we won't be safely storing their waste. Now what happens if halfway through the project things go bad? You get left with all of the waste and without the income stream to uh, to, to actually finish burying it. Um, let me just wrap up with one last one. Uh, the assumption is that even though there's going to be this incredibly high price that's going to make it incredibly profitable for you here in South Australia, as luck would have it, no one else in the world is going to copy you. Okay? No other country is going to say, wow, if people are willing to pay 1.7 million bucks a tonne, maybe I'll store waste in Chernobyl in the Ukraine which, by the way, the Ukraine is already planning to build a nuclear waste dump, unfortunately, in what is a tragically toxic site that will be uninhabitable for thousands of years. Similarly, if it's such a great idea, 
forget other countries undercutting you on that price, what about those buggers in Western Australia? <laughs> Seriously, if this is such a great idea, if this is so profitable, what's going to stop another state from doing it and bidding down the price? It gets better. Thanks to something called the Commonwealth Grants Commission, in Australia we actually share money between states quite fairly. And in the middle of the Western Australian mining boom, a lot of the revenue Western Australia got was actually smoothed out across the rest of the country. And that's good. It's nice to live in Australia where we share like that. But your Treasurer and the Royal Commissioner, I don't think have got any promises from the Federal Government that if you get this thing and it actually works, and you actually make some money, I don't think you've got any promises that you'll get to keep it. Because the Commonwealth Grants Commission process is designed to smooth it out. So you guys would get all of the nuclear waste and only your population share of the revenue. Again, there are huge question marks over this whole project and I, I should wrap up uh, now. But cut a long story short, the costs to the taxpayer will be up front. The risks to citizens their health and your environment will be up front. You're going to get the costs and you're going to get the risks the day this starts. And you might get the revenue over the next 100 years. Or you might not. It's risky. And it's not the only project that South Australia could invest in. It's a democracy. You are free to waste your money on anything you want. No one is going to stop you. Building white elephants, building Taj Mahals, building anything will create jobs. The question is which things that you build will deliver you benefits in the future? And which things will you build will leave you costs in the future? And I think on that point, it's a perfect time to hand over to Professor Blandy, who I think rightly is concerned about many of the long-term costs. Thank you very much.